and welcome to today's short video on fueling your body for exercise. Uh, this is a presentation on the importance of nutrition and hydration. It can be related to any form of performance, whether you're an athlete on a soccer team or a basketball team, or you are training and looking to do a maybe a longer run, a 5k run, a 10k run, whether that's on your own or as part of a race. But we're looking at the importance of hydration and nutrition as it, as it relates to uh, athletic performance. So our agenda, what we'll go through is six main parts. Number one is the importance of understanding nutrition and hydration and its effects on performance. Number two, the food groups. Number three, we'll list good and bad snacks. Number four, we'll go through when to eat in the build-up and also after performance. We'll go through some examples of uh, healthy foods, good foods, and also we'll touch on uh, hydration. So when we look at the importance of nutrition and hydration, um, there's a lot of literature on the subject, but it's not always easy to understand. So for the sake of this class, I want to use the analogy of a car and the fact that a car needs fuel to run regardless of the size of its engine, regardless of the car, the value of the car, the speed of the car, that car needs fuel in order for it to run. And although you can increase the size of your engine through exercise and working out, it makes no difference um, how big the engine is, how fast your car is. If there's no gas in that car, the car's probably not going to be moving. Um, the more you exercise and the more you work out, the more powerful you may become. The more you exercise, the more you work out, the better you may look or feel. These are all uh, performance increasing behaviors in the build up to your performance. But ultimately, if you don't also look at the nutrition, hydration, how you fuel your body, you'll end up with a, with a worthless car if there's no energy inside. You'll end up with a worthless body. You'll end up running out of energy halfway through a game. You'll end up running out of energy halfway through a run. You'll end up running out of energy halfway through a practice if you've not been able to fuel your body. An athlete without fuel will not be able to compete and will lack the energy they require to perform. So let's go through some the val or some some uh, points about a good diet versus a bad diet. So a good diet, if you are fueling your body correctly, uh, your muscles will be fueled with more energy. You'll increase your energy levels and you'll also increase your focus. It promotes recovery. So again, through nutrition and hydration, your muscles can recover after exercise. It can reduce your risk of illness and or injury and it helps you to achieve your best performance whatever your best performance again if you're looking to run a 10k race without adequate fuel in your body before the run you may not be able to beat your personal best you may not achieve that time that you're hoping to achieve if you're in a game of soccer and you haven't had the correct food before the game you might run out of energy in the 60th or 70th minute and may not be able to complete the whole 90 minutes. A bad diet can lower your energy levels before or during a contest. It can give you slower recovery or increased fatigue, so your muscles will not recover af during and after the contest or performance or game. Your muscle, your muscle, you will actually experience muscle loss or lack of muscle gain, especially if you're... Uh, tearing those muscles if you're let's say you're you're lifting weights or you're going on long runs when you're actually working your muscles your muscles are tearing it's how your muscles regrow is how the, is how they actually develop and, and get bigger without fueling those muscles you'll actually lose muscle or not not gain the muscle and you've also got increased chance of breakdown or injury or failure so when should we be eating so again we've gone through some values of why we have to eat, but when do we have to eat? 
High performer in an activity is based on what you've eaten the days before your performance or contest, not just the hours before. So I guess the point here is you can't be eating junk food two days before, one day before, but then the morning of a game, the morning of a run, the morning of a contest, expect to be able to put some super fuel into your body and all of a sudden you need to perform to your maximum level of performance. What you've been putting into your body for the for the days before your activity or performance will also have an effect. So days leading up to your performance, you need a healthy, balanced diet. Avoid saturated fats and sugary foods. These are just things we should be avoiding if we are training or looking to perform at a high level. Four to five hours prior to a performance, we're looking for a carbohydrate-rich meal. So this gives us plenty of time for your body to still digest the meal. What you don't want to do is be eating big meals right before performance. So four to five hours prior to performance, a carbohydrate-rich meal. Two to three hours before performance, we want something lighter, maybe a light lunch. Again, we've still got some time here, not too much time where the body can process this food and turn it into fuel. And then one to two hours prior to performance is just a snack or a power shake. You also need to look at the time of your performance. If your performance is at nine o'clock in the morning, you need to be thinking about what we eat at six, seven, eight. We might have to have that carbohydrate rich meal the evening before, maybe the morning of. It's just going to be a light breakfast or a power shake. But again, the timing of your performance is also going to be affected as to what and when you put into it. Also in the morning, decide whether or not you want too much food sitting on your stomach because, again, some people might perform or having um, having big meals too close to competition can sit on your stomach. They can actually hinder your performance. So the timing is also important. We're going to watch a short video in a second on carbohydrates, but we're actually going to now look at the uh, macronutrients. We're going to look at carbohydrates, proteins, and fats in more detail. These are the macro nutrients or the macro food groups. So carbohydrates are the most efficient fuel for energy production. This is the this is the fuel that is stored and readily available for our muscles and our body to use. These are especially important when engaging in longer activity of sixty minutes or more. So again, if you're in, if you're engaging in a game of soccer, you're running a ten k run or even a half marathon run. Um, you need to be making sure that you've got some glucogen stored in your body that's ready, readily available for your muscles to use to fuel them. Foods that are carbohydrate rich, pasta, bagels, cereal, fruits, and muffins. Okay, now we're going to watch a short video on functions of carbohydrates. What's up, dudes? And what's up, ladies? Brian here, and in this video, I am going to discuss the functions of carbohydrates in the body. Now, carbohydrates are one of the macronutrients, along with fat and protein, and carbohydrate-rich foods include fruits, vegetables, and grains. The first function of carbohydrates is energy production. Carbohydrates are broken down and transported through the bloodstream to supply energy to the muscles and tissues. Carbohydrates are the preferred fuel for the body. The next function is protein sparing. While protein can provide energy, it has many other life-sustaining functions. Having enough energy from carbohydrates allows protein to do its other jobs. The third function is energy storage. Carbohydrates can be stored as glycogen, which can be easily converted back to glucose and used for energy. However, the body does have limited storage space for glycogen about 2,000 calories worth. Carbohydrates aid in digestion. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that acts like a trash bag and allows you to remove large amounts of waste from your body. Bottom line time. Carbohydrates' major functions include providing energy, sparing protein, providing for energy storage, and aiding in digestion. So just a little video there just to reinforce the importance of, of carbohydrates. Now we'll move on to proteins. As the video just mentioned, proteins are also a source of energy. 
uh, but also proteins do other um, other important uh, functions in the body and one of those is is muscle repair so when our muscles are being utilized our muscles are actually tearing it's the regrowth of those muscles that makes it stronger and protein help repair and strengthen those muscle fibers high intensity sports damage muscle fibers proteins help repair them and help these muscles grow foods that are high in protein include fish milk eggs chicken and lean beef the other macronutrient food group was fats. Um, in order to perform, if you're if you're an athlete or you're working towards a performance or a race, then you really want to be avoiding uh, fatty foods, especially ones that have saturated fats. You know, sugars, fast food, sodas. These are all things that we really want to eliminate from our diet if we are working towards. Uh, some form of performance or an event. Uh, they can actually slow down your digestive system. While some fats are good and some are required and inevitably you will have some fats in your diet, they really offer no value to performance and you want to try to avoid them. Fast food, butter, may mayonnaise and salad dressings are fats that you want to try to want to avoid and to be aware that again salad dressings have a lot of fats mayonnaise and butter on sandwiches are carrying excess amounts of fats okay so we'll move on we'll list some good um, examples of good snacks so again as students you may be asking well what are the kind of things that we can just pick up uh, maybe they're reasonably cheap or they're quick to get my hands on what are things if i've not got time to cook a healthy meal what could i grab that can be a value in terms of nutrition uh, apples, bananas, raisins, crackers, bagels, muffins, granola bars, uh, fruit snacks, fig newtons and fig bars, apricots, muffins, blueberry muffins, breadsticks, popcorn, cereal. Again, be careful with the cereal as to not to get the cereal with too much sugar in it. Juice boxes, other vegetables, and also fruit sauce um, other carb rich foods include corn broccoli potatoes beans peaches oranges pancakes waffles oatmeal and pasta and again when i think of pancakes i think of 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 uh, maybe waffles oatmeal if you then lay us you know ounces of syrup on top of it again it defeats the purpose so when i look at this myself as as you know the professor the instructor i don't like every single thing on this on this list but i may go to bagels as my go-to uh, snack if i'm hungry i don't want to resort to, to eating fast food maybe i'll just get a nice dry bagel and snack on that dry bagel as as in order to to me to fuel my body so there's things on here that hopefully you guys might like and then post activity we, we talked about nutrition and hydration or nutrition mostly in the build-up but it's also very important to um, look at nutrition post active so what do you eat after your event after your race after you've been to the gym after you played basketball after your game of soccer um, and it's really important that after your activity the chances are your muscles are craving replenishment don't starve them of the fuel so again, we talked about um, proteins aiding in muscle repair. So now we're talking about uh, protein-rich foods, but chocolate milk, fruit, power bars, protein shake, and lots of water. I once got told by a very successful um, um, sports doctor that after you finish a game of soccer, for an example, again, my specialty in soccer, uh, it's better to have something to eat versus nothing. So if you can't get your hands on something healthy, just eat something that's maybe not ideal. But eating something is better than eating nothing after you finish some sort of um, strenuous activity because your body, your muscles are craving replenishment. But protein-rich foods are good for post-activity. And then hydration. So we looked at nutrition, we'll look at hydration. Uh, whilst water does not directly give us energy, it is vital for almost every 
bodily system. It also carries a lot of um, different um, food groups and micronutrients around the body. Dehydration, which comes from lack of water, can see not only a loss of function, but also a, lo a, a loss of, sorry, not only a, a have an effect on lo loss of performance, but also a loss of function. Not only can, can being dehydrated affect your performance, it can actually affect your health. So replenishing water is very important, especially important when training in high temperatures. So again, if you're in San Jose in the summer and you're training in the afternoon, there's a, there's a good chance you're training in 80 degrees or higher, then you need to make sure that you're replenishing your water uh, in proportion to the, the temperature that might be outside. Um, you should be drinking two liters of water per day. So think of the, a, a liter bottle of water, two liters of water per day. Um, and also know that you can lose a liter of water for every hour that you're working out in hot conditions. So you need to be adding that much water. Basically, water consumption is very important. Dehydration can be dangerous. Thank you much. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Simon.cook at evc.edu. I hope you found the video valuable.